Good morning, Matt. How are we today? I'm very good. What are we out here doing? Where are we? What's the time? What's the date? How far out are we from your goal race and what are we doing? We're in the forest. You're 30 minutes late. <laughs> Shh, don't tell people that. <laughs> um, we're going to do two hours, two hours ish, maybe a little less. Yeah. We've already done four miles waiting for you, so I've topped it up a bit. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, Rotterdam is. Six weeks today, seven weeks. Seven weeks is it? I've lost count. It's all mapped out. But uh, yeah, not long, not long. So we're going to get two hours bank today. We're going to talk all about Kenya, be training for this block, have a good catch up and fill people, uh, people in on where you're at with training. Perfect. Let's go for it. Right, so let's talk about training. Um, you come back from Kenya, you've started this Rotterdam block, and I can see, and a lot of people can see on Strava in particular, that you have a slightly different style at the moment. Today, for you, is all about banking miles and not really doing anything crazy, but your midweeks are, pro are proving to be very interesting for people like me and everyone else to watch. Some controlled workouts, some long tempos, but the most interesting thing is the hills you're putting in, uh, in and around all of this. Is that because of a bit of a change in mindset since when you came back from Kenya, looking at the rolling trails, dirt roads that they run on? What's the rationale behind that? So yeah, uh, in the town, everything is hilly, everything is trailed, and I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed not thinking about pace and just running to feel and just taking it easy on the hills but I also saw just how strong everyone was there and their strength comes from these hills it's not because they're all in the gym and doing loads of weights and strength work it's from the fact that everything's on the hills their workouts on the hills they're easy runs so I have the hills on my doorstep I've got these beautiful trails and yes I run on them but I would almost avoid them for my easy days and I was doing so many flat road runs I decided when I came back to do probably more than half of my easy runs on the trails, my longer easy runs on the trails, and then now and again top it up with an easy double on the road. So going back to the training load, obviously we're talking about 90 mile weeks. This week hopefully will be a 90, week before 90, week before that 90. Week before that was a little down week just to manage a back niggle, but before that was 90. That combined with the elevation will and must feel a heck of a lot more. Um, but everything's really controlled and we'll talk about your workouts in a second. But how are you feeling now, this deep, into the Rotterdam training block with all of this? You're feeling quite fresh, quite fatigued. How is it compared to other blocks? Um, my general fatigue is pretty good, I don't feel too bad. My legs feel heavy, but I think a lot of that's because my easy run, I've got to start with a massive uphill, like there's so many hills, and it's hard doing recovery runs on the trails. Um, we really do have to go slowly, so I'm hitting paces like three, four minutes per mile slower than goal marathon pace, which is madness. But, on some of the hills you have to, and on the tired legs, I want them to recover, so that's my priority. So yeah, the legs are tired, but that's because the volume for me is high. Like you said, I'm getting 11 to 12 hours of running done. Yeah. Um, and I'm just letting my body adapt, letting it get used to this higher volume. Because, as you said, it's 90 miles, but it almost feels like a similar similar load to 100 miles with the amount of time I'm running. Yeah, and so and so this leads me then on to the final question of this section, which is going to be about the workouts you're doing. They're very controlled, which is with the load you're putting into your body, 90 mile weeks, big elevation, it seems a sensible thing to do. You're not trashing yourself uh, in those workouts. You're doing double days on Tuesday and a longer effort on a Thursday. 
um, Tuesdays in the vapor fly, Thursdays in the alpha fly, um, and you're working on lactate, which is interesting. And your lactate readings are good from what I've seen in the last two or three runs, three, between three and four millimole of lactate, which is a bit of a sweet spot, isn't it? It's not pushing yourself too much, but it's also getting a really good stimulus. So again, compared to previous blocks, are these more controlled workouts compared to what you've done in the past? Have you been tempted to go faster in previous blocks? What is, again, the rationale behind that? In previous blocks, I feel like I've overcooked myself a little bit. I think too early and I've worked pretty hard in the early bit of the block, in the middle bit of the block. This one I'm really trying to control. I'm almost not looking for the optimum block. I'm just looking for a nice, decent control block and then a decent marathon. Because I believe that even a decent marathon for me would be a PB. So Tuesdays, I'm doing Ingebrigtsen style double threshold. Um, but I need to stress, this is so controlled. Yeah. Like, it's working out the whole day about, about 19 miles of running. So it's a big day, but it's only actually about an hour of volume of intensity. And that intensity is not top end, is it? It's like, very controlled. Lots, lots of runners will be doing these, this sort of intensity and calling it easy on Strava. Yeah. Whereas I'm calling it a session and a second session. Yeah. Like, I'm doing like in the morning, I'm doing five times a mile. Yeah. So basically five times five and a half a minute. Yeah. Last Tuesday, I was hitting like 545 pace. That, slower than your marathon pace. Yeah, it's like considerably slower than I want to be running in the marathon. Yeah. So most people are like, well, that's not a session. But it is, and it's, it's working that threshold from below rather than trying to hit it from above. Right it, yeah. yeah. And then arguably your session that just happened on Thursday, you go out and you smash 10 miles, very controlled, very nice heart rate in the 520s. Well, that's the thing. I'm doing these double sessions, really controlled, <coughs> taking lactate measurements, making sure that I'm getting the intensity right. And I seem to be working well. I'm doing on the Tuesday second session, faster work. So minute ons yeah. or three minute ons. So I'm running faster, but with the recoveries, I'm still hitting that same lactate. Yeah. I'm still controlling it. And then on the Thursday, that's my day to enjoy myself a little bit more, work a bit harder, but over a longer distance. So a couple of weeks ago, it's 20 miles. Uh, allowing myself permission just to work hard. Yeah. That came in at 5.45 a mile. And then Thursday just gone. The shorter one was a 10 miler. And that was a bit of a shock, really. Came in at 5.24 a mile. I was expecting it to be more like 5.30, considering I was hitting 5.45 per mile for five minutes with recoveries yeah. a couple of days earlier. It just shows that those Tuesdays are super controlled, kind of allowing myself to put in some decent work on Thursday. Which epitomizes the motto you've been using all of this block, which is trust the process. Yeah. You're trusting it, and last Thursday you reap the rewards of that and you just keep keep it controlled now until we'll talk about tune-up races shortly uh, we'll get a bit more of the run done but in general the whole trust the process thing right now seems to be working yeah absolutely like i'm just trusting the process sometimes you can get a little impatient but i'm just trying to keep everything controlled trust that it works keep turning up and hopefully that'll pay off in the end Okay, so moving on to tune-up races. Uh, we were just talking about this again. Um, not had many tune-up races in this block. Uh, so what are your, what have you got? We obviously you've got this, for people that know you, you've got this P24 with Solomon, which is a 24 hour world record attempt. Let's talk a little bit about that and the other, other things you have planned in this uh, build-up. So yeah, that's one of the tricky things is that I've got so few races. I'm never going to the well and testing myself to the maximum, so it's very difficult to know what shape I'm in. 
I was meant to do Speedway 10k and that ended up being like you said my down week um, I did something with my back and I couldn't walk on a Saturday and I thought my block was over <laughs> I thought I was going to be out for a month but it fixed itself but I didn't get the opportunity to race then pretty much I got the P24 which is a relay so I'm doing six times an hour slot with three hour recovery there's an ultra marathon but with brakes so I had no idea what place to do in that but again that doesn't tell me too much about my marathon shape and not the perfect timing but I've got Carla Path two weeks out so I will do that hard as my like almost my last hard effort then into the taper yeah um so hopefully i get some confidence from that yeah but in this block that's the one thing that irks me a little bit is that <laughs> i'm not testing myself so what i have planned is a time trial um and the 10 mile time trial in a few weeks and that'll be a test of my fitness and I was trying to decide what lesson to do and I feel like 5k, 10k beats me up quite a bit because I run faster and that's where I get my niggles so 10 miles is a nice sweet spot 13, half marathon maybe a little bit greedy and in my head psychologically 10 miles is a good distance because even if it's not true I can lie to myself and say <laughs> whatever pace I hold for 10 miles on my own perhaps in a race with fast runners around me and the adrenaline I can hold for half a marathon so yeah I'd, I'd agree with that I think what you've got to remember with time trials is there's a mental battle with yourself and although you're testing fitness you do have that extra edge on race day which does seem to carry you through so I mean Cardiff will be interesting because I think you'll be in great shape for that and obviously the P24 which is first weekend in March so that is Thursday, to Friday. Thursday sorry yeah so early March, so early March that's one hour every four hours so you've got one hour on three hours off yeah, times six really. <laughs> times six I'm so I'm always tempted to just one star break to <laughs> yeah six times an hour three hour recovery <laughs> should be a good one should be a good one Right, so the final segment of this is let's talk about Kenya. So if anyone's followed your YouTube channel, it'll be linked on this video. They'll have seen the documentation that you did when you went out to Kenya just before Christmas. Uh, we talked about sort of earlier how that mindset has kind of played maybe a bit of a role into this training block. But for you, what has been one of the, well, a few really, biggest lessons that you've taken away from that Kenyan experience. I'm over here, Andy. <laughs> uh, my biggest takeaway. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. I think for me, one of the main ones, it's not even a training one, it's a mental one. The mindset of the runners out there is unbe unbelievable. Yeah. They all truly believe that if they put the work in, they're going to be champions. And it's contagious, that, that mindset of, if you'll work hard and stay patient, you're going to improve. They, they all trust that process, they all believe. If I just turn up, do what I'm doing, yeah. then I'm going to become great. And obviously it's all relative, but for me, I'm trying to use that in this block. Turn up, do the work, and I do believe that that will give me a really good performance of the marathon. But also, I'm just really enjoying the training. So let me go in front because there's cyclists coming. But uh, for you, doing core cool work next to Bridget Cross guy, seeing uh, hey, uh, oh, yeah. seeing Kipchoge, 
doing his workout I mean for me as much as it must have been a bit of a star striking experience at the same time it feels like they normalize amazing I'm gonna go in front again there's more cyclists and they, <laughs> they normalize the incredible athletes they have there and mix in with everyone um, did you feel any sort of segregation between the elites and the non-elites or was it all very community-based feeling there's only elites Look, if I'm honest <laughs> out in Kenya the Kenyans are all elites they don't really have recreational runners no um, but massively welcoming like I'm not elite and the Kenya experience was just normal runners out there yeah and it was just such a welcoming experience we were all training on the track with Kipchoge and they didn't seem to think anything of it they were fine yeah um, that's what it felt like just just normal oh yeah to see these people and it was just massively inspiring being around them and being around just so many runners with such a good work ethic such a positive attitude uh, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Amazing. That's the mindset aspect to it, the training aspect, like we said, the hills. They do, they control their sessions probably better than I have done previously. And they're doing faster work than I'm doing now. Right now, I feel like I can't handle both an increase in volume and an increase in intensity. Yeah. So I've chosen volume and it's not the optimum block, but I think it'll be good enough. And then down the line, if I can get my body into a place where I can handle a bit more, I'll throw in some faster stuff too. So obviously Rotterdam is second weekend in April or first. So we were saying earlier, it's about eight weeks out. Goals for Rotterdam, any times, or just running strong? So I know I've got a time on these things, but it's not even that I don't want the pressure. I just don't want to force splits in training. Yeah. Um, so I'm very much just trying to get as fit as I can, as strong as I can, and then just see what happens. And will you go by feel or heart rate on the day, or both? It won't be heart rate. Yeah. It'll be feel, and by then I'll know pretty much what shape I'm in. Yeah. But for now, I'm just doing the work and letting the fitness and strength come to me. Nice, nice. Well. It's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you today. We are about, you're coming up to 16 miles. I'm four miles behind and I'm going to be banking two hours. You'll be a bit over. And uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully these guys that are watching can hop over to your channel and go in there. If they haven't seen the Kenyan experience, go and watch it because they are some of the best videos I've seen lately. Thank you. And, uh, we wish you all the best to Rotterdam. Cheers, Andy.